All right, trying something a little bit different here, using my uh, tripod as a selfie stick kind of thing. So, uh, but I wanted to share something with you from uh, Matthew. It's a beautiful fall day here. You can see the leaves have been coming off from the trees. They are all over the deck. And um, I was sitting out here enjoying this fall crisp morning, watching the leaves fall, listening to the the fountain and I was thinking Jesus allowed Peter to walk on water <laughs> this is uh, Matthew chapter 14 and uh, this is coming at the beginning of the chapter um, where after the beginning of the chapter where first of all um, Herod beheads John the Baptist and so Jesus cousin has just died and if you can think about that, a cousin that you were close to, that you had a tight bond with, has passed away, and now you are left facing this uh, time of mourning and this loss. Now, of course, Jesus knew he was going to see John the Baptist when he got to heaven, but still, he died. And we see here in the bottom of, uh, I mean, in... Uh, Verses 13 and 14, when Jesus heard of it, he, he departed, talking about the news of John the Baptist, he departed um, thence by ship into a desert place, and when the people heard, had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities, and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude, and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. So most of us would have very likely said, hang on just a second, my cousin just died, give me a minute, okay? Or give me a day, or I may need some time before I can start back to ministry. But not Jesus. He saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. And that was a challenge to me, and I hope it's a challenge to you. But what comes next after this is we have him preaching this sermon to this mul these multitudes and then feeding the 5,000. That's just the men. Maybe as many as 10,000, 15,000 people with women and children. And the disciples are just like, whoa, that is awesome. So they see him do this and then Jesus goes back up into a mountain or apart from them to pray. And the disciples, he sends them across the way to um, the other side of the Sea of Galilee, I believe it is. And in the middle of the night, the storm, there's a storm picks up and Jesus, for whatever reason, decides he's gonna walk out to the disciples. They're in the middle of the sea. So how is that gonna happen? Obviously it's Jesus, so he walks on the water. We're familiar with the story. Um, and it's interesting, these were disciple. The, these were seasoned fishermen, many of them, and the disciples look at him and they're like, "What in the world is that coming? Do, do you see that? Look, <laughs> you know they have this ah! moment. There's a ghost. I can't believe it walking to us on the water. There's no way that's humanly possible, but it was. It was Jesus." And so he walks to the disciples and he says, he can tell they're afraid, he knows. And so he calls out to them, be not afraid, um, it is I, don't, don't, you don't have to be afraid, I'm not a ghost. Um, and uh, Jesus, Peter, um, amazing Peter, calls out to him and he says, Jesus, if it be thou, bid me come to thee. I'm sitting here thinking, wow, this is amazing. We love the story. And so Jesus says, come. And he gets out of the boat and he walks, starts walking on the water. He takes his eyes off Jesus. There's so many lessons in this story that are awesome. And he's, uh, Jesus saved me. And he, Jesus is there. He saves him. And he walks back with Jesus to the boat on the water. But one of the things that struck me this morning is I was thinking, what purpose did this serve possibly in any way for the furtherance of the kingdom of heaven? Because, um, you know, you sit down with a, a Bible study group or you sit down with 
uh, even in your church business meetings or whatever, visitation programs, and you know, you're like, hey, what can we do to have a better impact, to have a greater outreach, to um, bring more people to the Lord? And you don't have anybody stand up and say, hey, um, I have an idea. Um, I want to jump off the roof of our church because I s just saw Jesus do it and I think it'd be really awesome. <laughs> uh, no, you don't have people doing that. Um, the closest thing I can think of is obviously the disciples that were there. It, it built their faith. And it was a huge thing because it says after this, it says, uh, it doesn't say after this, it says then they bowed down and worshiped him and knew they said you truly are the son of god so it was their experience that's how awesome our god is he gives these men and especially peter this phenomenal experience just to build their faith just to make them better tools god has amazing things in store for you it may be big it may be small i don't know but it's a plan that will bring him glory that is going to be best for you and it will build your faith i hope that's an encouragement i hope it's a challenge i know i say that every time but learn from this learn from the bible god has given us phenomenal resources and a tremendous um depth of wisdom that we can glean from reading in his word.